Hi, welcome back to Box Delights. Today I'm going to be showing you a game called Cytosis, published by Genius Games. This is a worker placement game. And what I like about Genius Games is they give all their games a very scientific slant. This one is set inside a human cell, but the rules are very straightforward, very simple, and they deliver the science through the theme. Because I think this is very much a gateway worker placement game. It's everything you expect from worker placement. There is a virus expansion included, which sees you, as you're working inside the human cell, to build hormones and enzymes and receptors to earn health points. Health points are your victory points. There's this virus expansion that allows your antibodies to defend against viral attacks. But what I'm going to demo for you today is a solo variant on the basic game. It's going to deliver all the same concepts. It's just a little way of, of playing this one player. It allows me to demo the game to you. One thing that Genius Games do is they, as well as deliver a rule book, they'll give you a four page rundown of the science behind the game. How does this game deliver the theme? These are the components for the, the virus expansion. You've got some player boards here to, it's one to five, uh, two to five, one with, the, with my variant. This is, uh, the player boards that allow you to react to these viruses. There's some dice rolling involved, extra cubes. So we'll put those aside for now. Like every good Euro, we've got some wooden cubes for representing our resources. Just to give you a sense of what this is about, the red ones here are protein resources. They're called macromolecule resources, things that help you build these enzymes, hormones, and receptors that score you health points. All right, so red ones are proteins, the black ones are called mRNA, yellow are lipid resources, and these green ones are carbohydrates. We have a third player token. We have some grey flasks. Flasks are our workers in this game. It's what we use to take actions. So there's two grey flasks which can be picked up as extra workers. Each player has its own set of, of flasks in different colours here, as well as some Tokens to select goals. These are like individual goals, extra ways uh, that you can earn points. So if you're the first person to achieve a certain goal, you get some extra points. Okay. And then finally we have these ATP tokens. These are energy carrying molecules. When we consume our food, uh, that gets converted into energy that are carried by these molecules that helps us fuel all this process. Okay, so they end up being the currency of the game. So all pretty standard stuff with just uh, you know this science layered on top. These are the things we're trying to build. These are cell components. So you can see if we build a protein hormone, we get eight eight health, eight victory points, um, or an enzyme for health. Okay, but as well as giving you this individual health, some of these give us points for sets. So if we create uh, two horm uh, two enzymes, then we get additional points. Okay, so for two cards we get an extra two points. If we get three of these we get five, four, nine, five, fourteen, do you see? So you kind of can build up, um, develop uh, a strategy of collecting different things. Okay, these get shuffled. I'm going to actually remove these alcohol detoxification ones from the game. This is just a, a, a quick way of, of um, again collecting more points. Uh, they cost 2 ATP or 3 ATP and it gives you one, one health point, one victory point. But it says player with the most of these at the end of the game scores extra points. 8 points, second most, 5 points, third most, 2 points. So just for the solo game we're just going to whip these out and remove those. Uh, but otherwise the, the game's pretty much the same. I think I've changed up one thing on the way the grey flasks are used as well. But we'll, we'll talk about that when we come to it. Okay, and then just like what you see in a, um, in a co-op game really, we've got these event cards that kind of keep things ticking over. These end up being the timer for the game. So you, you turn an event each turn, each round, um, and they kind of alter up the rules slightly for the game. There is a little bit of scaling that goes on in the game. So in a two-player game, they ask you to remove two of these events randomly, or in a three-player game, two or three-player game, just to make it a little bit shorter. I'm going to do for the solo game is remove an additional two. So in a solo game, we end up with 
and not 12 cards, but 8. The other thing I'm going to remove from the game for solo is the goal cards. But keep an eye on these if you're, let's say, we'll get the orange player out here. Two players within the game can complete goals, and you do so you have these two goal tokens. Again, it scales, so in a four or five player game, you use all of these. Three player, you remove one. Two player, you remove one. Um, and the idea is that the first player who completes this goal, so for example, this one says steroid hormones, gain an additional two points for each steroid hormone you completed. So it's a way of getting extra points at the end of the game. So you put your goal token on. Another player may come along later and complete this goal as well. All you're doing is saying, this is the strategy I'm going to employ. These are the things I'm going to go for. So if you've decided to place your goal po tokens down here, and that happens by placing one of your workers on here, it's called laureates in biology. You place your flask token here, you get to place your goal marker on one of these goals that's out there. So you're kind of forsaking one of your actions on a turn, but you're laying claim to one of these goals before other players do. And the first person to lay claim to one of these goals gets an additional three points immediately. All right. And then obviously after the, the second person gets nothing, and then nobody else can take this goal. All right. They'll have to go for one of these others. And, and you have two goal tokens. So you can spread out your goals, spread out your strategies. Which of these two are you going to go for? So in the solo game, we're just going to remove these. And then there's one other piece of scaling that happens in the two-player game. Like any good worker placement, you're going to be fighting to place your workers in different spots. And there's a limited number of spots that can be placed. So a third player can't place in here, right? Because they've already been taken by these two workers. Or it could be that one player's taken both. In the two-player rules, uh, what you've got to remember is where you see two spots, there's only one spot. Okay, so once the player's placed a flask here, the second player can't. All right, so that's a change-up for the two-player game. We're going to use the same rules in the solo game, in the solo variant. So we're going to play as if we're playing two-player. There are some exceptions, like the mitochondria up here, there's three spots. So in the two-player game, that's reduced to uh, two spots. All right, so there you go. We've got the, the modifications down. Let's just quickly finish setting up. So we've got our event deck shuffled and ready to go. These cell components, these are the things you're building that's going to earn you points and you're going to be placing your workers on the board here to help you gather the resources you need to complete these things. So in this card here, for example, you need two energy, two ATP, one what's the green cube, a carbohydrate, and two red cubes, two proteins. And once you've completed this card, you take it from your hand and you lay it down and you score the four health points all right, on this victory point chat, uh, track around the outside. So I'm going to play green. We're going to start up here at zero points. And of course, in a regular game, the player with the most points at the end is the winner. Okay. Uh, for the solo variant, we've given ourselves a target of 50 points. So all the way around, back up to the top uh, to claim victory. I should quickly show you the reverse side of the board. This is the viral side. You see the victory point track has changed and the number of antibody dice you roll depends on where you are on this track, how healthy your cells are. Excellent. Okay. So this becomes an offer down the bottom here of all these cell component cards. So these are things that we can buy the card at the far left here is free. When you buy this, you place a worker here, you purchase this card, you place it in your hand, and then you aim to build this thing to get your health. If you want to buy things further up the track, you can do, but it's going to cost you ATP, it's going to cost you energy. Okay. At the end of each round, things shuffle off, and the new cards fill from the right. So things that you don't purchase are going to disappear, and that's a lot of the strategy, is determining which things you're going to go for. And you'll see that in the solo game, it's all about trying to decide and optimising which cards you're going to take to maximise the things you're trying to achieve. And a lot of it around trying to get these additional points. Incidentally, and this gives me an opportunity to tell you there's another way to get points. This steroid hormone receptor. Um, an interesting little interaction between other players if you build a second steroid hormone receptor, you get an additional one point. Um, if other people do, you get two points. And the more of these you have, the more points you build up. So if I have, um, 
if I have three of these and somebody else builds one, I get two points for each, so two plus six. All right, if I build another one myself, another three points. One, two, three. Okay, so another way of building up points. There's one other component to building, like in here, these, these hormones. Uh, this circle, so for the orange player, here they are. These are called transport vesicles. Each player has two of them, and it's these that are key to building these hormones because what you do is they act like little transport vehicles. So when you come up here and place a worker, you're collecting some of these proteins, you're moving down and adding some carbs. Yeah, and then once you've gotten down here and you're building the cell, yeah, th th this is what um, this is what completes it. All right, so you need in this case two energy three proteins, one carb, sitting on one of these vesicles, these transporter vesicles, okay? So this is that element of worker placement that's quite different. You place a worker, you get some resources, but then this transport vesicle, it stays there, and then you take another action to move it here to the, the Golg Golgi apparatus, move it to the next part through the cell, and then again with another worker, another flask, here to the plasma membrane for exocytosis to then complete the hormone and receptor synthesis. Okay, so these little vehicles, they stay with the player and you can use them. You've only got two, so you can't have too many things on the go being worked on at once. I should say the flasks go over here. You're limited to the number of flasks you have, so each player's got four flasks. All right, so four workers, but you can grab an extra one. It costs four energy, four ATP. You can grab an extra one. And the other benefit of this, let's say a worker spot's been replaced with a gray flask, I'm a green player, I can, I can still place it here. I can place it anywhere that's blocked. All right, and then it goes away. So it's kind of a temporary bonus flask. Uh, you can only place one, one per turn. So I've just changed this up slightly in the solo rules and said, you know, in the multiplayer game, you can just keep doing every turn. You can buy one of these things for four energy. Um, in the solo rules, I've said you can use each flask once per game. Once you've used it, it goes away, goes away. Um, but also, you could potentially use them both uh, on the same turn. And this is really cool because what happens at, at the end, in the final round of the game, when this event deck's gone through and you've completed the game, um, you may have some stuff on the end of the board. You just don't have enough workers to finish off. So uh, those grey flasks are really useful in that end turn to just kind of finish things off and complete and, and maximise your, your points at the end. Cool. All right. So let's grab the green player stuff. Um, and we'll also keep another set. Um, we'll keep the pink ones out. And I'll show you why in a minute. I don't need the tokens. I just need the flasks. Um, each player starts the game with two cell component cards. What you do is you deal each player uh, three cards. They choose two to keep and shuffle the remaining one back into um, back into the deck. I might take these two. I think I'll shuffle this one back in. All right. Oh, I should add when you're playing multiplayer, first player. After taking this token, we'll take two of these tokens, uh, these energy ATP tokens. Uh, second player will take three, next player four, and so on to kind of balance that start. So we're going to take two to start us off. And also in multiplayer, you get fewer flasks. In a, in a two or three player game, you get four flasks. In a four player game, you only get three, and in a five player game, only two. All right, so there are fewer workers for you to place stuff around the board. We also get some starting resources, either two black, two yellow, or two energy. Okay, so two RMNA, two lipid, two energy. Now I've already explained how the ATP are like the currency of the game, and you need this energy to uh, complete your cell items, right, your cell components. Um, and you also need these resources, so like carbohydrates and proteins. You can only, uh, the thing about carbohydrates, you can grab carbohydrates and you can grab lipids, the green and the yellow. Right? The thing about proteins is you have to build them. You have to, okay, you have to build the proteins. 
and these are built, you can see you've got here black goes to red, black goes to red. You have to build them from these RMNA, these black cubes. So these kind of like your basic building blocks. I'm going to take two of these. You can get more on your turn from here in the nucleus. They come out of the nucleus. Here you synthesize, this is receptor synthesis. You turn these from black into red. And from here you can put them on your transport vesicles. And then from here you can add greens and yellows. Greens and yellows can come from different places. So over here in the mitochondria, you can get energy. These are our blue ones. Again, you can actually turn carbohydrates into energy, right? Makes sense, right? And then down here in the plasma membrane, you can turn energy into carbohydrate, glucose transporter. Okay, so those green ones can then come and be added here. And then down here, we can complete our cards. And then the yellow ones, the lipids, these are, this happens up here in the lipid synthesis and the alcohol detoxification. Um, area of the cell. Okay, so that's the kind of the basic nature of this game. Grab black, turn them into red, add green and yellows. Grab green from over here, grab yellow from over here, add yellow, add yellow green, synthesize, complete your cards. Alright, so you're kind of working your way through the cell in this in this method. Alright, so I'm going to take two blacks, two mRNA.